Welcome everyone, this is the Jenkins Platform SIG meeting, we're June the 20, and today around the table we have virtual table, we have Damien Dupodel, um, Kevin Martins, Mark Waits, and we'll see later on if we see Kenneth or not. On the agenda, we have one open action item, but maybe we'll close it, we'll see. Uh, we have a proposal for Mark, we have a little bit of work ongoing and we can make a small update of what has been done and i think that at the end we should be able to talk a little bit about the docker hub stats so as always it's been the case for many months now um docker image and especially the blue ocean one mark we talked two weeks from now about the deprecation happening for blue ocean and the fact that you provided something within jenkins that would allow people to know more about uh, what they are running Jenkins on. I mean, if their operating system is deprecated or other parts of what they are using is deprecated. So is there um, any progress specifically for Blue Ocean or not? No, the, the container the container images are need need additional work in the code. So mm -hmm. not yet. And it will probably be several weeks before I make any progress there. Okay, no, no rush there, but uh, we decided that we would talk about <laughs> each and every meeting until yes. they sorted out. So, and I think that's fine. Let's keep let's keep it on the agenda. I don't feel at all ashamed saying that I okay. haven't made progress. We'll just keep <laughs> talking about it. Fine with me. Thank you, Mark. Uh, then you made a proposal to cancel the meeting for July the fourth. Uh, it's Independence Day in US and maybe in other parts of the world. So yes, why not? Uh, because lots of you won't be able to attend. Fine with me, Damien, fine with you. Okay, Kevin, I guess it's fine with you too because you're located in the US. So, okay, let's get it done. We'll uh, cancel that. So Mark, um, you can remove it. You have the right to remove it from the agenda, I guess. Okay, so thank you for doing that. Uh, then a short paragraph about what has been done lately on agent and controller images. Uh, some parts of the agents and of the controller were not using yet update CLI. It's not mandatory to use update CLI. You can use renewable, depend about whatever. But I tried my luck and added a few things here and there to update some parts of the um, Docker images. So I have done um, a little bit of um, update for SSH agent, thanks to the guidance and patience of Damien. Thanks a lot for that. And also for the Jenkins controller image uh, so for the time being we are uh, tracking no we are not yet tracking it's not merged yet i think yes it is sorry i even can't read my own notes <laughs> uh, so we are working to update so various parts of the controller uh and uh for um, the agent images uh, damien would you have anything to share about that Oh, the, the work is great. It's gone going. So step by step. So, <laughs> so I have I have actually had a question and, and with da Damien here, it's a good thing. So so previously we were managing the operating system updates through Dependabot. This will change it so that now they are managed with update CLI rather than with Dependabot. Is that correct? Exactly. One of the limitations of Dependabot is that it can only track the from instruction of Docker files. While update CLI and RenovaBot can track also ARG uh, instruction. So in any case, you cannot use Dependabot for tracking, for instance, the, uh, the Git version we install on the Windows Docker images, as an example. Um, we have to choose and to carefully select which, uh, uh, which tool we use, because from instruction is easier to read and maintain, but the advantage of the arg instruction is that you we can specify it one from the environment and then use it on all the docker files um, what we saw is that arg makes more sense even for the parent images because it allows us to keep it to keep track of it once for whole and what we saw on the docker agent image is that we can even factorize we don't need to maintain duplicated code between GDK 11 image and GDK 17. So, so, and so is there some hope then also to 
to factorize similarly in the controller or is that that not not feasible uh technically yes that would be okay. a good thing but uh yeah right now we focused on the image mm -hmm. because less code on the image on the agent images sorry uh it's also a good step but then yeah, yes absolutely that could be a nice improvement for the controller image great thank you okay so so update cli will see increased use and the benefit of that is we will then be tracking operating system versions and jdk versions with update cli great thank you uh yes i was trying to force push uh, push the use of update cli it's just that i know nothing about <laughs> renovate bot and not so much about depend the bot and just a little tiny bit about update CLI that kind of works for me. So that's why I, um, and of course, I had discussion with Damien before that. Uh, so that I propose that, but it's not my own ID. It's just, I'm just the one who implemented that with the help, guidance, and patience of Damien. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Um, anything else about that? No, cool. So now a uh, little bit of a list à la prévère, we would say in French, uh, about the latest updates for the Docker images. So once again, we have breaking changes for SSH agents, which happened in 5.4.0. And we are now with the version 5.5.0. And the breaking change, I think, was the um, pinning of the Alpine version, then the tracking of the Alpine Linux based version. Um, or was it the fact that we built Alpine Linux? No, no, I think it was a pinning of Alpine version. Uh, Damien, am I right about that? Damien? I don't remember you. exactly to be okay, quite honest. Not a problem. It was not a trap. Whatever, it's a breaking change. Uh, please have a look at the change log if you're using that and note what is important for you. Uh, one thing that was uh, awaited, I think, is the Git version bumping on uh, Windows, which was kind of blocked because of a, the, a little update CLI um, bug, I think, bug yes. or yeah, lack of feature, whatever. Exactly. We updated uh, update CLI this weekend with the latest version and everything is going back to normal, uh, including updating Windows version. So, yep, Windows Git version. So, yep. yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, then there was also a Docker agent release, uh, which bumped the Alpine Linux version and the Jenkins remoting version, a new Docker Ubuntu agent, which bumped the parent uh, Jenkins agent version. And then, of course, a new Docker controller 2.410 because of the uh, delivery of Jenkins 2.410. And now um, a modification for Mark, uh, which ha helps to download from mirrors and not from repo.jenkinci.org. Uh, I guess this has to do with the bandwidth uh, reduction effort, or is it something totally different, Mark? It, it, it does, sort of. It, it, it was inspired by that, but the inspiration is not actually driven by any real data that says that oh. the, the, the download volume is measurable or detectable as, a, as an appreciable change. It's not. It's just that we've already got a, we, we don't need to download everything from repo. And anytime we can download from our mirrors, we can actually make it faster for our users because there's only one repo, but there are seven or eight mirrors of Jenkins Jenkins binaries all over the world. And for instance, my access to the mirror nearest me is significantly faster if I use the mirror than if I use repo. Got it. Uh, thank you. It's a good practice uh, nonetheless. So, yeah. Thank you, Mark. Any questions about the latest updates of the images? Okay. Fine. Now to the Docker Hub stats. I had a look at the shared spreadsheet this morning. Uh, unfortunately, after I made a stupid PR uh, that created an Alpine, no, an Alpine, an Arc Linux GDK 17 um, image uh, for, I even can't remember the, whatever. Uh, the thing is, I had a look at the download statistics later on and saw that the Arch Linux for JDK 11, for example, was not significant <laughs> at all. So maybe uh, we don't need to do something about Arch Linux for JDK 17 because no 
body is using the JDK 11. So I don't know. Uh, yes, you will update that once a month, I guess. Uh, it's kind of manual for the time being, Damien, but it's useful, to say the least. Nice. So I guess that 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 should ask uh, or at least trigger again the question raised by Tim Jacob a few months ago about should we keep the Arc Linux image? Yeah. Um, I've uh, I've sent a tweet to the Arc Linux account a few weeks ago. I've never had any answer. Uh, no one jumped as as far as I can tell. So my proposal is that we start the process of remove uh, stop providing the Arc Linux image. Um, uh, my proposal is to continue on the issue that team started and that might need to include a mark on your, uh, let's say, uh, tentative to mark some operating system as deprecated. Any occurrence of Arc Linux will, inside a container would say, would trigger the message in an ideal future. Mm. Yeah, so as we can see, uh, I don't have the name of the headers unfortunately but i see 3770 uh, not very encouraging for the yeah so in the month of march three only unique ip3 pull by tag three yes i guess we can forget about arch linux but so and that was that was the agent was that was the agent download right is that correct yep yep because uh, we don't deliver a controller with Arch Linux, Arch no, Linux at as all. As I knew. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Now, now, in terms of that, is another piece of the deprecation thing. I'm confident that Jenkins has a way to let us tell users that they're running an operating system on an agent that is deprecated, because there are plugins that do that. But that's not what the current thing does, right? The current one only warns about the controller operating system. But I think I think it's a logical extension to declare to the administrator, hey, someone in your environment ran a job that used a Docker container that is running a dead operating system. Are you sure you want that to continue? Nice. Uh, thank you. So, of course, you can close if I don't do it by myself. My uh, PR <laughs> doesn't make much sense in this context. Uh, anything else about Docker Hub stats, uh, Damien, or anybody else? I need to update last month. I haven't done it, done it yet, but say this, nope, nothing else for me. Yeah, it's it's okay. So I guess that we are not using it yet to its full potential. So we'll see. Maybe we'll uh, make decisions later on uh, based on that. But yes, for the time being, not so much. Thank you, Damien. Uh, Mark, Kevin, Damien, any open question or subject you would like to address during this meeting? Uh, yes, the availability of the Windows uh, image for the controller. Uh, we have one contributor uh, that requested that we update because for a lot of reasons that I don't want to detail now, uh, the the Windows image doesn't provide any version tag such as 2.4001.1 Windows. So we don't have this one. So it's always the latest. When you docker pool Jenkins slash Jenkins column Windows server, you get the latest. But latest is a Jenkins weekly version from 14, 15 months ago, which of course trigger a lot of red messages to the users and a user complaint for good reason about that and the user took actions uh, and uh, we have merged a pull request from that user as a short term yesterday and the weekly release that we had today ensured that the pull request has an effect so now the latest windows version is uh, 2.4.10 so that's the weekly release from last week now the next step will be to update the the Windows specific builds, so they will produce the expected tag and update the image. So next week, the goal is that if we can meet that deadline, we will have a weekly release 2.412 Tuesday, and we will have an LTS update. If we're able to land that change before that, that means next week we will have 
updated version for Windows controller images. So is, uh, this is a terrible thing to ask, but I'm going to ask it anyway, is there enough interest in Windows-based controller images for us to justify the work? So we've got we've got one contributor that found the problem in 15 months or that detected enough of a problem to submit the pull request. That's great. That's a victory. Is it really worth it to us to continue that? Well, I guess the, the answer is it cost us nothing to do it badly, right? It costs us nothing to ignore it. And if this contributor is willing to help maintain it, then it costs us almost nothing to keep keep shipping it but there's something to be said for not shipping it at all. Uh, the, the, help me out there, Damien. Um, today, each time we have a release, we spawn a Windows machine to build containers. So today it's costing us money on each release in any case. We don't pay for the storage of the image on the Docker Hub though. So additionally to that, we have the visibility of someone who won't try, if we have one user who reported the problem and was, uh, let's say, good and patient enough to even propose contribution and make a contribution, that means we have other silent users. And uh, the image of Jenkins of providing a default Windows thing to newcomers that has a big red warning is not good. So um, my proposal is that we, now that we have um, simplified the publication process, you have a tag and you build a version with that tag. The efforts to add the, the new tags and use that environment variable properly is, is simple. And for me, it's worth it because we already build and push an image every week. Your question still is a good thing. Should we keep using the Windows image? In that case, that will mean stop publishing Windows images at all to avoid costing money. The amount of money we are speaking here is almost nothing. Right. I, I right. think, yeah. So, yeah, we could gain something, but I would prefer having more exotic platform. We have one user that's enough. Uh, then it's the, like the Arc Linux. If the user disappear from the surface of our issue trackers, at least, and then we have issues, then we can stop publishing the image. And that's all. But for now, we have someone active, so I would prefer following there, given the effort looks really easy there. What do you think? Okay, so so for, I would I would phrase it, I like what you're describing. I would phrase it even a little further. I would say, so long as we have a maintainer for the Windows image, and this new user, this user who submitted the pull request is acting as though they are a maintainer. Um, we may want to ask them officially, would you willing, be willing to become a maintainer? That I don't know, but so long as we've got a maintainer, I'm okay with it. I think that sounds reasonable. If they drop out and no longer are able to maintain or or we find it becomes costly for our, our efforts, then, then we, we can consider dropping it. I think you're right that we will waste more energy communicating the end of life then then we will just by bringing it back to life absolutely i agree on that proposal so if it's okay for everyone then i propose that i will ask the user on the issue they open on the controller image and ask them if they are willing to help with a um, let's say a safe message saying they won't be alone but we right. we need someone identified at least by default i don't mind uh, helping and being identified on the windows port i don't fear it now uh so yeah uh being too maintainer of that part but yeah i don't want to be alone and we need someone else than someone working for the jenkins infra right well and and i think that's the crucial element right is is are they willing to help we don't need them to carry the whole burden but if they're unwilling to help they say no i just don't have time to help then i think our answer should be okay we need to reconsider if the windows container image is worth us doing we appreciate your contribution but it obviously was not important enough for the rest of us to have detected it for those many months, right? And since it was not important for the rest of us, we need someone for whom it is important. Thank you, okay. Uh, Mark and Damien, I I'm just kidding, but you said a few words that triggered me. <laughs> um, Damien, you said, I'm not afraid of uh, Windows containers. And uh, you also said exotic, um, <laughs> 
operating system or thing like that. So I was thinking, Mark, do you still have your Windows ARM64 machine? Yes, I do, actually. Stop uh, right there. It's not supported for <laughs> Docker. Docker okay. CE doesn't support. And I don't need Docker. Yet I, I don't Windows. use Docker on Win Windows ARM64. So absolutely. But yes, I do still have it. And it is, in fact, still connected to my controller as an agent. Okay. <laughs> I stopped writing my tracks. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else before I get another stupid idea? Okay, looks like it's a wrap. Thanks a lot for coming. The video should be uploaded and available from 24 to 48 hours. And see you in a month uh, from now, I'm afraid. And until there, see you on Gitter, Community Jenkins IO, or on the Jenkins mailing list, whatever. Thanks a lot for your time and see you in a month. Bye bye. Bye bye.